Michigan football has been facing an amount of uncertainty this past about week and a half, I would say, regarding Jim Harbaugh, as according to reporters, analysts, all different kinds of people, he is interested in NFL jobs. I don't know how true that is, because personally, I am not an insider, but that's what's been reported, and I'm just going to assume that it is somewhat true, and Jim Harbaugh even spoke about it on a radio station that the rumors this year are at least more fun than last year. I don't know what that means, because as a Michigan fan myself, my head coach can be a pretty weird guy sometimes. But anyway, it's not really what we're going to be talking about here today. I'm only mentioning it because I think hiring Mike Elston away from Notre Dame tells us as college football fans something about Jim Harbaugh. I think it tells us that he is not going anywhere because Mike Elston has been entrenched at Notre Dame since the year 2010, at which point I was turning eight years old. So he's been there For more than half of my lifetime, he's been there for more of a decade, which even if you're like 50, 60, 70, 80, that's a large portion of your lifetime. And he's been coaching essentially that same position. He coached the defensive line from 2010 to 2014, the linebackers from 2015 to 16. He was also the recruiting coordinator there. 2018 to 2021, he was the assistant head coach and defensive line coach. He was also the recruiting guy for 2021. So he's been coaching the front seven for over a decade at Notre Dame. He's an excellent recruiter. We're going to talk a little bit bit more about that later in this episode. I'm going to be reading a few articles by 24-7 Sports. I love them, especially their takes on recruiting and just looking at their rankings and stuff. Many of you probably know who they are, but if you don't already, go check them out. It's just 247sports.com. But anyway, he's been at Notre Dame forever. And even though Michigan is his alma mater, he has never made the move away. He finally has an opportunity to take the defensive coordinator job at Notre Dame. Reportedly, he was passed up and Marcus Freeman wants someone else. So he decides to come here. And I don't know the contract details. I don't think they've been released yet. But this is, a this is I would say, an upgrade from Sean Nua. This guy's a proven recruiter, a proven developer. He's put several guys in in the draft, and Notre Dame does in general, especially in the trenches. And we do, personally, after looking at this year, it would be nice to have even stronger trenches and stronger trench play than we already do. So I think he's a great addition to the staff. It's nice to have a guy who has been able to recruit well in the Midwest, recruit well in general, a guy who also has ties to Michigan as he played for Michigan. So having him play for Michigan and contribute to the team on the field and then come back here to contribute for the team for on the field and off the field matters is awesome. It's it's really good, in my opinion at least, for the program, and it helps the team, I think, could help us build an even stronger Michigan team culture. But that's just really my opinion. I'm now going to read the first article by 24-7 Sports that was released around five hours ago. I was busy earlier today, so I couldn't get to it. But here we are now talking about it, and that's all that matters. Breaking. Notre Dame's Mike Elston to become the Michigan defensive line coach. Irish Illustrated has learned through sources that defensive line coach Mike Elston will leave the fighting Irish coaching staff and become the next defensive line coach at Michigan. Mind you guys, this was a lateral move. It's not like we gave him the co-defensive coordinator title or any other title. 
So it's a completely lateral move, much like Sean Nua leaving for the USC job. We learned that Jim Harbaugh extended the offer this week and Elston has accepted. There was chatter about him initially following former head coach Brian Kelly to LSU, but sources were adamant that he was uninterested in heading south and preferred to stay in the Midwest and Notre Dame. However, it looks like his time in South Bend ended and he'll take a new challenge in Ann Arbor with the Wolverines. It's a tough blow for Notre Dame as Elston has done a tremendous job with the fighting Irish, coaching the defensive line, front seven, recruiting very well. As I already said, this is a great opportunity for Elston in his pursuit to be a coordinator eventually and then a head coach down the road. Because I would say that, you know, Notre Dame, it's a it's a good job. It's a good football school. But at Michigan, looking at what Michigan just is right now, what how they kind of broke through was what was their assumed ceiling this year, and then Notre Dame, it's a new head coach, and the Oklahoma State loss kind of has everyone, and I think even himself and Marcus Freeman kind of questioning a, a lot because that was a horrible, horrible loss by Notre Dame. But Notre Dame is entering a new era, and Elston just decided to come on over to Michigan, who looks to be a school that is going upward, and if he can assist in that, that will look good on his resume. Brian Kelly once said that Elston has done a tremendous job in recruiting and is a natural fit in that role. He has had success designing and organizing our recruiting efforts. We look forward to him leading us there. Additionally, his expertise with the defensive line can assist us in our run game preparation and coordination. Elston was a Michigan alum from 1993 to 96 and a three-year letter winner with the Wolverines as an outside linebacker. He's been extremely successful during his time as a college assistant coach. He started out working for Michigan, in fact, as a student assistant, video intern, and graduate assistant. He then went to Eastern Michigan. From there, he joined Kelly at Central Michigan before following him to Cincinnati and then to Notre Dame. So he's been with Brian Kelly for, if you round up the numbers, two decades, 20 years. That's a long, it's a long time. Of course, if you round, it's really been 18 years. And this is his first job that he will be without Brian Kelly. There's some more of this article talking about all the players he's drafted and such, but there's another article that breaks it down simpler, and I'm going to get into that one. I'm going to link the, the both of these articles, pardon me, down below so that you guys can read them because I like to, you know, cite my sources, and it's just something that I have always done, and this is a perfect spot to kind of take a little bit of a break and let you guys know to like this video if you like it so far hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell and comment your thoughts down below what do you think of this hire if you're especially if you're a michigan fan or a big 10 fan because i personally for the reasons that we're about to talk about in a few seconds think that this is a step up from sean newa and sean newa was a a good defensive line coach. He helped coach Aiden Hutchinson, and he helped coach a defensive line that was pretty effective, mainly in the pass rush. Yet the defensive line in his tenure here has had some consistent weaknesses. This year, it was unable to stop the run against Michigan State, and with the exception of Ohio, the Ohio State game, it struggled against the run in general. It did pretty had a pretty similar weaknesses in 2020 and 2019 when Newell was here as well. So I think this is personally an upgrade, but like and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell. I'm doing a giveaway at 3,000 subs, so stay tuned for that. Within the next few days, I'm going to announce what the giveaway is. But back to what we were talking about. The next article I'm going to read is Getting to Know Michigan D-Line Coach Mike Elston, which explains basically all the players that he has coached who have gone into the draft or named some kind of college honors. And here they are. 
Mike Elston, and who he has coached. Defensive lineman Dalen Hayes from Notre Dame, drafted in the fifth round of the 2021 NFL Draft by the Ravens. Defensive lineman Adedo Kunbo Ojundeji, I'm surprised I could somewhat pronounce that name, drafted in the fifth round of the 2021 NFL Draft by the Atlanta Falcons. Defensive lineman Julian Okwara, drafted in the third round of the 2020 NFL Draft by the Lions. Defensive lineman Khalid Kareem, 2020 NFL Draft fifth round pick and PFF's highest rated defensive player in 2019. Defensive lineman Jerry Tillery from Notre Dame. 2019 NFL first round pick by the Chargers. 2018 first team All-American. Linebacker Jalen Smith from Notre Dame. 2016 NFL draft second round pick by the Cowboys. 2015 Consensus All-American. 2015 Butkus Award recipient. Defensive tackle Sheldon Day, Notre Dame, 2016 draft fourth round pick by the Jaguars, 2015 first team All-American. And there are three others as well, one of whom is a place kicker, so it's not even not even going to bother naming those guys. The other two are defensive lineman Stefan Tuitt from Notre Dame, who is a second round pick and an All-American first team in 2012. And defensive lineman Lewis Nix III, who was a third-round pick and a third-team All-American, drafted in 2014, was named to the All-American list in 2012. So that list might have been a little long, but that's just to show you that this guy can develop and that he can recruit the talent that can be developed. I mean, there were plenty of All-Americans on that list. There was a first-round pick in there, a second-round pick. And that's 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 what I want to see personally. If I'm a Michigan fan, hiring a guy who we have a lot of youth on our staff already, so I'm not complaining that this guy is 47 years old. He's from Michigan. He obviously knows what he's doing because of that long list provided. When you're given a list of players that a coach has developed, and you get bored into the list. That is a sign that they are doing their job because likely the list is so long and it shows the large amount of production that that they have, the guys that they can develop and produce. So that's that article. I already had I already read the previous one to you guys. So now we are going to move on to comparing the defensive line that he coached this year to Michigan's defensive line. And this is just kind of showing you guys the latter portion of his resume, or the most recent portion, the portion that matters. You know, if this guy developed all those prospects but was kind of on the decline and his defensive lineman unit production kept falling and falling, this wouldn't be a great hire. But Notre Dame's defensive line would say otherwise. But let's talk about Michigan's defensive line first. Michigan's defensive line this year, as we all know, you think of Aiden Hutchinson. The name Christopher Hinton pops in your mind. Taylor Upshaw could also pop in your mind. You know, there are other guys like Joey George, who's, I think, a backup. You got Rashawn Benny, who's a freshman. You have Donovan Jeter, and just plenty of other guys. Jess Spate, who has been here forever, brother of Wilton Spate. You just have so many, you have so many names, but the main guy was Aiden Hutchinson, who was an edge rusher. He had 14 sacks on the year, three passes defended, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. It was him and Ojabo were the only guys over 10 sacks but then the next guy in sacks after them, Taylor Upshaw, had two and a half. It was basically a two-man army from a pressure perspective. And those guys were really good. But when you look at Notre Dame's defensive line, granted, they some would make the argument they play against inferior competition. Notre Dame's defensive line, Isaiah Foskey had 11 sacks. Justin Adamola, Molala. Had five and a half sacks. 
His brother Jason had three and a half, and then you had two defensive linemen who each had three, four defensive linemen who each had two. Notre Dame's defensive line in all together had 35 of the team's 41 sacks. Michigan's defensive line had 19 and a half of the team's 34 sacks. And that's mainly because David Ojabo, who is a linebacker used mainly on passing down situations, has 11 sacks from Michigan. Michigan, of course, using more of a 3-4 look than Notre Dame does. But nonetheless, Michigan's defensive line this year certainly was a strength in the pass rush. You could argue that it was a weakness in defending the run at times. But Notre Dame's defensive line just being really impressive this year. 35 sacks, 9 forced fumbles, 5 fumble recoveries, almost 300 total tackles, 50 tackles for loss. The Notre Dame defense was not at the top of the tree. It was not at the top of the shelf, per se. It wasn't the most elite, but it was certainly good. And, you know, you had a good D-line for Notre Dame. You had a good secondary and Notre Dame in general was a pretty good team this year. I would say that Michigan was the better team, but nonetheless, that's just, it is what it is. And I think you look at his previous years as well. You look at Mike Elston's previous years, especially in 2018, the year where Notre Dame went undefeated. They had a very good defensive line. They had a really deep, I think, three-man rotation that they had going on and were one of the best teams in the country. They made the playoff and actually beat Michigan that year. So he has a resume. He has credibility. I love this hire, and I think that it's going to be a great fit. And Sean knew a leaving for a lateral move stinks, but then seeing especially how we could go out there and get a guy from a Power 5 school, from a program who, at the moment, is definitely top 10. Just seeing that happen gives me confidence in this team moving forward that the adjustments made this year were serious. They were not a one-year thing to kind of keep keep a, a dead man walking. They were they're permanent. Going out and getting a hire like this after after you know, a key guy in you winning the Big Ten for the first time since 2004, it's big. We got an upgrade. Honestly, I mean, this was, this right here to me is comparable to Maurice Linguist being hired away to Buffalo, which hurt, and then us hiring Steve Klinkscale, which was a huge upgrade. This to me rings the same bell. Sean Newell was good. He did not by any means deserved to be fired. He did a phenomenal job. This was his best defensive line unit. He left for another opportunity, an opportunity that is closer to his home in USC. And Mike Elston, who's a Midwestern guy, a guy who can recruit, a guy who is older, perhaps more wiser than Sean Nua, a guy who actually played at Michigan as well, comes in here to get a fresh start, and he brings a massive resume an impressive one at that so that's just my opinions and that's all i have to say for this video i think that this adds to an already solid michigan coaching staff and i think once again that this shows that harbaugh isn't going anywhere and i hope that the university you know gives gives harbaugh a raise and maybe that'll be another video but i think that the job done this year deserves rewards and deserve some extra investment in the football program, especially when you have a good coaching staff and you just added another great addition to make it even better in this one. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment your thoughts on this hire and on Michigan football down below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys around.